Hi everyone, this is MA152 Design Project by Jahangir Ashraf, Guillermo Jimenez, and Joseph Alex Sanchez. For this particular project, we chose to analyze an Oleo strut landing gear, which can be found commonly on the P-40 Warhawks used in World War II. Pictured here is a close-up of the Oleo strut mentioned in the previous slide. This is the Oleo strut in assembly form. As you can see at the bottom, it's attached to the wheel and near the top is where it attaches to the actual plane itself. Uh, we chose to analyze this because we saw that there were two main problems with the actual assembly because one was supporting the actual weight of the plane. The weight of the plane was around 27,000 newtons or 27 kilonewtons. So we figured each strut would be having to support 9,000 newtons or 9 kilonewtons. And the second problem was if it would, if it could support 9,000 uh, newtons, could it support double the weight? Because during landing in non-ideal conditions, planes oftentimes have to support one 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 strut has to support double the weight in order for it to balance on the ground. One of the first steps we took was to create free body diagrams, and so you can see here that. There are two reaction forces where it's attached to the plane itself near the top and there's a force applied from the bottom and that represents the weight of the plane acting on the strut. One of the things we had to take into account for this design project was worst case scenarios and the worst case scenario that we found for our particular situation was a bird hitting the strut mid-flight. So we did a free body diagram analyzation on that as well and what's different in this one is from the previous one is that there's a force applied in the horizontal direction rather than the vertical direction. The horizontal force, of course, represents the bird hitting the oleo strut and shearing the strut itself. This is a drawing we found online that we took as a reference in order to create our solid model of the oleo strut. And now this is the finished product on SolidWorks. We took the 3D model we created and performed a static analysis on it. We did this by applying a load near the bottom where the purple arrows are and fixing it at the top where the green arrows are. That represents the wheel and the connection to the plane respectively. And all we had to do was create a mesh and run the simulation. This is a table of the linear analysis we performed on the oleo strut. This is a table of the nonlinear analysis we performed on the oleo strut. This is an example of nonlinear analysis that we performed on the actual strut. We did a linear and nonlinear analysis in order to compare and contrast the two different situations that would present themselves. This is the second analysis we performed. This had a separate set of boundary conditions, as you can see that there are two reaction forces at the top representing the connection to the plane and now there's a vertical force instead of a horizontal representing the weight of the plane acting on the strut. This is a table of the linear analysis we performed on the oleo strut. It shows the results for the static analysis, the thermal analysis, as well as the buckling analysis. Pictured here is the static analysis performed on the oleo strut. This is the results model, which shows the yielding points as well as the stresses it goes through as a load is applied near the bottom. This is the thermal analysis done on the model. Near the top was kept at a warmer temperature due to the fact that it was exposed to oil in the actual strut. And near the bottom it was exposed to the atmosphere when it's in at a high altitude so it's kept at a colder temperature. This picture shows the results of the 3D model after the buckling analysis. This is a secondary view of the buckling analysis. This is the fatigue analysis that we performed and basically we did this in order to see what the oleo strut its reaction would be to both forces both in the horizontal and the vertical being applied at 10,000 cycles and what the lifespan of the oleo strut would be. This is the results of the fatigue analysis that we performed earlier. 
it was seen that the failure would be most likely occurring near the top of the oleostra where it's connected to the actual plane itself. We decided to do a further analysis on the oleostra just to see if we could reduce the cost of production in order to make uh, manufacturing more efficient. And to do this, we reduce the material of the oleostrut. So picture it here as an analysis done with the initial boundary conditions, which are similar to the previous analysis. But this time, the material is at 90%, which means we took it down by a percentage of 10. Since the reduced material analysis was a success in the last picture, we decided to reduce it even more. And so we reduced it by 25% and perform the analysis with same boundary conditions as before and we found that this also was successful. In conclusion we decided to do an analysis on the oleostrut found most commonly on the P-40 Warhawks used in World War II. We did nonlinear and linear static analysis, thermal analysis, buckling analysis, as well as fatigue analysis and in the end we also went as far as finding if we could improve the production costs which we successfully did at the end. Thank you for your time and I hope you enjoyed our slides.